The information in this video is provided for informational and educational purposes only. Hey everybody, welcome to the Morale Monologue. I'm Michael Morale. In today's video, I've got some exciting news about a potential new treatment for those of us with SMA. The FDA just granted Roche Genentech priority review status for their potential treatment known as Rizdaplam. So I put together a small PowerPoint presentation where I talk about Rizdaplam and I give you some of the benefits that we as SMA patients could see if we take the Rizdaplam treatment if it's approved by the FDA. Now this video is going to be a little bit longer than most, but I think it's going to be well worth your time to watch it because I'm going to be giving you a lot of great information that you can talk to your doctors about. So after you listen to a word from our sponsor, I'll go directly into the PowerPoint presentation. Then afterwards, I'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. Thank you. This vlog was made possible by a sponsorship from Avexis, a company dedicated to developing and commercializing gene therapies for patients and families devastated by rare and life-threatening neurological genetic diseases. To learn more about a treatment for spinal muscular atrophy, visit treatsma.com. That's treatsma.com. It's where you will discover how this treatment works, hear about family stories, and learn about the steps to starting treatment. Visit treatsma.com today. Okay, so what is Rizdaplam? Now, before I begin, this first slide has a lot of scientific information, but bear with me. After this one, it'll get a lot more interesting. RG7916 was an experimental drug developed by Roche Genentech in cooperation with PTC Therapeutics and the SMA Foundation. It works by increasing the amount of functional survival of motor neuron protein that's produced by the SMN2 gene through modifying its splicing pattern. When clinical trials started, RG7916 was given its new name, and we know it now as Rizdaplam. Spinraza, the first FDA-approved treatment for SMA, is delivered by an intrathecal or IT injection, and Zolgensma, the second FDA-approved treatment for SMA, is delivered by an intravenous or IV infusion. If passed by the FDA, Rizdaplam will be the third FDA-approved treatment for SMA, and it will be delivered orally. Rizdaplam will be a liquid medicine, and it's being developed for all types of SMA and for all ages of SMA patients. Rizdaplam, like Spinraza, is a splicing modifier, meaning that it can change the way pre-messenger RNA molecules, or what they call messenger RNA molecules, are generated from DNA before the protein production, and it's how these molecules are spliced or edited to generate full-length messenger RNA and a working SMN protein. Okay. Enough with all of the science stuff. Let's get to the good stuff. Benefits of Rizdaplam. Rizdaplam, if approved by the FDA to become the next treatment that's available to those of us with SMA, will be given orally, which means that we will no longer have to receive injections in our backs, sides, or necks. Doctors will prescribe this medication to us, and we will have the ability to drink this medicine on a daily basis to receive our treatment. No more trips to the hospital and no more anxiety attacks about having doctors inject us with needles. And probably one of the most important benefits, or at least it is in my opinion, is that the majority of patients who are on active treatment with Spinraza have had spinal fusions due to their scoliosis. While many of us have been successful with our treatments, there are numerous individuals who were unable to receive these injections due to the fact that doctors are not able to find an opening in their spinal column to inject the treatment. Since Rizdaplam will be an oral treatment, this will give everyone the opportunity to receive this possible life-changing treatment opportunity. Some patients were able to begin their Spinraza treatments, but the openings that doctors were using to inject this treatment became inaccessible, causing some patients to not be able to receive any further future treatments. Some patients actually went through a procedure called a laminectomy, which is where the doctor surgically opened an area in the spinal column itself to provide an opening for the injection. Patients receiving Rizdaplam will no longer have to worry about the opening actually closing up and not being available for future treatments. From my perspective, 
My spin rods injections are not a major concern because I've already gone through so many of them and I know what to expect. While I'm comfortable with receiving my injections, I still think about all of the children that are going through these injections themselves. We as adults know what to expect and we've become familiar and probably somewhat comfortable with receiving our injections. But children sometimes don't have the ability to think about the positives as to why they are receiving these injections. They just know that mom and dad are gonna take them someplace to receive a shot. And this can be a very emotional and traumatic experience for them. If Rizdaplam is approved for all ages, this would virtually eliminate the anxiety that children go through regarding their treatments. When will Rizdaplam be available? Rizdaplam was just granted priority review status from the FDA. The FDA granted Biogen Pharmaceuticals fast track status for their treatment known as Spinraza, and the FDA granted Avexis Pharmaceuticals priority review status for their treatment known as Ogensma. Priority review status and fast track status are essentially the same thing. Pharmaceutical companies that submit treatments to the FDA for approval usually wait 8 to 12 months before they get approved or denied from the FDA. If they are granted either priority review status or fast track status, this typically means that the decision time from the FDA is anywhere from three to five months, give or take one or two months. Questions regarding Rizdaplam. Now, some of the answers that I'm gonna be giving are my opinion and my opinion only. How much is Rizdaplam going to cost? Right now, no one knows the cost of Rizdaplam because they haven't released any information regarding cost of this treatment. Will insurance companies pay for this treatment? My personal opinion, I think insurance companies will approve treating with Rizdaplam probably quicker than they have with regards to Spinraza and Zolgensma. Both Spinraza and Zolgensma require hospitalization along with all of the associated costs, such as doctors, nurses, labs, surgical suites, and all of the other hospital-related costs that are above and beyond the cost of the treatment itself. With insurance companies not having to pay for all of the hospital-related costs, they'll probably see the benefits that Rizdaplam has to offer, thus making their decision easier regarding the approval process. Now remember, these are my opinions. Will Rizdaplam be available to everyone? Unfortunately, this information has not been released by Roche Genentech, and until the FDA gives them approval, and or until the FDA actually writes the label for Rizdaplam, this information will be an unknown. My personal opinion is that it will be available to all ages because they're testing all ages in their clinical trials. Now for the conclusion, and remember, again, these are my opinions. Do you think Rizdaplam will be approved by the FDA? My answer is yes. By what we've heard, Roche Genentech have received some very good results from their clinical trials, and I don't think the FDA would have given them priority review status if it hadn't have been for the positive data from their clinical trials. When do you think the Rizdaplam will be approved? We've heard that the projected date for the decision is either on or before May 24th of 2020. Zolgensma was granted approval by the FDA on May 24th, 2019. And I find it funny that they're using the one year anniversary date from Zogensma as the projected date as the approval for Rizdaplam. Okay, so that concludes my PowerPoint presentation and I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation and I hope you got some information out of it that you can use as well. You know, I've been saying for a long time that those of us with SMA have a lot to look forward to, and you're probably tired of me saying it, but it's true, because if you think about it, five years ago, we had nothing, and now, potentially, by the mid part of 2020, we could see three viable treatments for SMA, and some of the treatments that are gonna be coming out in the next couple of years, I truly think will revolutionize the way that they treat SMA, and I hope that you're as optimistic about the future as I am. All right, so if you enjoyed this episode of the Morality Monologue, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the SMA News Today YouTube channel. We would greatly appreciate it. Remember, when you subscribe to the channel, 
click on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified of any new videos that we produce. We at SMA News Today hope all of you have had a fantastic day. Do me a favor. This upcoming week, do something for yourself that's going to make you a better person. Until next time, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.